Hi to all everyone we welcome my channel. Today we exploring the greatest man of the world political leader, Mr. Narendra Modi's inspiring life journey to the office of Prime Minister began in the bylanes of Vadnagar, a small town in North Gujarat's Mahana district. He was born on the 17th of September 1950, three years after India had gained its independence. This makes him the first Prime Minister to be born in independent India. Mr. Modi is the third child born to Damodadas Modi and Hiraba Modi. Mr. Modi comes from a family of humble origins and modest means. The entire family lived in a small single-story house which was a pro- Narendra Modi, the 14th and current Prime Minister of India, is a prominent political figure known for his charismatic leadership and impactful policies. Born on 17 September 1950, in Vadnagar, a small town in Gujarat. Modi's journey to the highest echelons of Indian politics is marked by determination, resilience, and a commitment to public service. Modi's early life was humble, and he ventured into the Rashtriya Swayansevak. Sangh, RSS, a right-wing Hindu nationalist paramilitary volunteer organization during his teenage years. His association with the RSS laid the foundation for his political career. Modi later joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, and quickly rose through the ranks due to his organizational skills and dedication. In 2001, Narendra Modi became the Chief Minister of Gujarat. His tenure in this role was marked by both accolades and controversies. The state witnessed significant economic development under his leadership, earning him praise for his pro-business approach and efforts to attract investments. However, the Gujarat riots of 2002, a communal and tragic event that occurred during his early tenure, drew widespread criticism, with concerns about the handling of the situation. Despite the challenges, Modi's popularity grew, and he continued to be re-elected as the Chief Minister of Gujarat multiple times. In 2014, he led the BJP to a historic victory in the general elections and became the Prime Minister of India. His campaign centered around the promise of development, economic reforms, and good governance. As Prime Minister, Modi has implemented various initiatives including Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Clean India Mission, Make in India, and the Goods and Services Tax, GST. His government has also focused on infrastructure development, financial inclusion, and social welfare programs. Approximately 40 feet by 12 feet, Narendra Modi's formative years taught him early tough lessons as he balanced his studies. Non-academic life to spare time to work at the family-owned tea stall as the family struggled to make ends meet. His school friends remember that as a child also he was very industrious and had an affinity for debates and a curiosity to read books. Schoolmates recollect how Mr. Modi used to spend many hours reading in the local library. As a child he was also fond of swimming, Mr. Modi's thoughts and dreams as a child were quite removed from how most children of his age thought. Perhaps it was the influence of Vadnagar which once used to be a vibrant center of Buddhist learning and spirituality many centuries ago. As a child also he always felt a strong urge to make a difference to society. He was highly influenced by the works of Swami Vivekananda which laid the foundation of his journey towards spiritualism and which inspired him to pursue the mission to fulfill Swamiji's dream of making India a Jagat Guru. At the age of 17 he left home to travel across India. For two years he travelled across the expansive landscape of India exploring various cultures. When he returned home he was a changed man with a clear aim of what he wanted to achieve in life. He went to Ahmedabad and joined Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh, RSS. RSS is a socio-cultural organisation working towards the social and cultural regeneration of India. It was a tough routine for Narendra Modi in Ahmedabad since 1972 when he became a Pracharak for RSS. His day began at 5 a.m. and went on till late night. Late 1970s also saw a young Narendra Modi join the movement to restore democracy in India which was reeling under emergency. 
while continuing to shoulder different responsibilities within the Sangh during the 1980s Narendra Modi emerged as an organizer exemplar with his organizing skills. In 1987 a different chapter began in the life of Mr. Modi when he started work as the General Secretary of the BJP in Gujarat. In his first task Mr. Modi won a victory for the BJP in Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation elections for the first time ever. He also ensured that the BJP was a close second to the Congress in the 1990 Gujarat Assembly elections. In the 1995 Assembly elections Mr. Modi's organizational skills ensured the BJP's vote share increased and the party won 121 seats in the Assembly. Mr. Modi worked as the National Secretary of BJP from 1995 looking after party's activities in Haryana and Himachal Pradesh. As BJP's General Secretary organization, he worked to ensure the BJP won the 1998 Lok Sabha elections. It was in September 2001 that Mr. Modi received a phone call from then Prime Minister Vajpayee, which opened a new chapter in his life taking him from the rough and tumble of organizational politics to the world of governance. Economic Reforms Modi's government initiated economic reforms to boost growth and development. The Introduction of the Goods and Services Tax GST, aimed at simplifying the taxation system. And demonetization, in 2016 aimed at curbing black money, were some of the bold economic measures taken. Infrastructure Development The government launched various infrastructure projects, including the Swatch Bharat Abhayan. Clean India Mission, the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Housing for All, and the Smart Cities Mission, to enhance urban infrastructure. Digital India, Modi emphasized the importance of technology and digital initiatives. The Digital India campaign aimed at promoting the use of technology. To connect rural areas with high-speed internet networks, and improve digital literacy. Foreign policy, Modi's foreign policy focused on strengthening India's global position. He engaged in diplomatic initiatives, strengthening ties with various nations, and fostering economic cooperation. His visits to countries like the United States, Japan, and Israel were notable in this regard. Social welfare schemes, the government introduced several social welfare Schemes such as the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. Financial inclusion, Pradhan Mantri Ajwala Yojana. LPG gas connections for the poor. And Ayushman Bharat, health insurance for vulnerable families. National security, there was an increased emphasis on national security. With policies addressing border tensions and counter-terrorism measures. The surgical strikes in 2016 and the airstrike in Balakot in 2019 were notable events during Modi's tenure. <laughs>
in the same inaugural session the manifesto for the past general election was also approved dot in the past general election the jana san court moved to pulli pochim 6% votes and three mp including dr mukherjee were elected jana san court the status of an idol party in the parliament neidal democratic front was formed under the leadership of dr mukherjee akidal kaintentra parishad hindu mahasabha tamil nadu tolas party commonwealth party dravid kadhagam lok sevak sangh and independence together had 38 mp 32 lok sabha and 6 rajya sabha mp in this front in this minor president of the bharatiya jana sangh dr mukherjee was the first informal leader of the opposition of the country dr syama prasad mukherjee strongly agitated against giving the whole bengal to pakistan consequently pakistan could get only half of bengal on the advice of mahatma gandhi dr mukherjee was included in the central cabinet but due to india's subdued policy with pakistan and being against the nehru lay court by expressing indifference to the security of hindus in pakistan dr mukherjee resigned from the cabinet to these two contexts gave birth to the jana sang dr mukherjee made the second rss sarsangata kri guruji and the process of forming the jana sang was started Hiving been started in May 1951. This process was completed on October 21, 1951, with the formation of the Bharatiya Jana Sang under the President of DR. Syama Prasad Mukherjee It was formed at the Rakomal Kanya Madhyamik Vidyalaya in Delhi. The rectangular Cypran plague was accepted as its plague and Deepak inscribed on it was accepted as the election symbol. In the same inaugural session the manifesto for the past general election was also approved dot in the past general election the jana san court moved to pulli pochim 6% votes and three mp including dr mukherjee were elected jana san court the status of an idol party in the parliament neidal democratic front was formed under the leadership of dr mukherjee akidal kaintentra parishad hindu mahasabha tamil nadu tolas party Commonwealth Party, Dravid Kadhagam, Lok Sevak Sangh and Independence together had 38 MP, 32 Lok Sabha and 6 Rajya Sabha MP in this front. In this minor, President of the Bharatiya Jana Sangh DR Mukherjee was the first informal leader of the opposition of the country. British had left India in 1947, but Goad Mandiyu and Pondicherry were still parts of the Portuguese and French empires. The Jana Sangh started a movement for their freedom. Jana Sangh Karyakarta Shri Narwane freed Dadar on 22nd July, 1954, and Shri Narwane led the freedom of Naroli Island on 29th July. Jana Sangh Karyakarta Shri Heman Soman hoisted the tricolor on the Portuguese government secretariat in Panji on 15th August. Under the leadership of All India Secretary of the Jana Sang Shri Jagannath Rao Joshi with a group of 101 satyagrahis entered Goa they were arrested and tortured Shri Raja Bhav Mahakal of Madhya Pradesh and Shri Amir Chandra Gupta of Uttar Pradesh were martyred with the call of changing the education system the third conference of the Jana Sang was held in Jodhpur from 28 December 1954 to 2nd January 1955 PT Prem Nath Dogra the leader of the movement for Jammu and Kashmir integration became the president from April 19 to 22 1955 the fourth conference was held in Jaipur renowned mathematician Acharya Ghosh became the president the fifth conference was held in Delhi states were being formed for building a case for federation regionalism and violence was seen in its naked form the jana sang demanded integral administration decentralized up to janpadas at the delhi conference itself the resolution of bharti akran against communalism was passed and the manifesto for 1957 general election was drafted on august 8 1953 First Padanuntu Minus Day Study Camp of the Bharatiya Jana Sangh was conducted in Bilaspur Food, 
Under the presidentship of Acharya Devaprasad Ghosh, the sixth conference was held in Ambala from April 4 to April 1958. Constitutional arrangement for electoral reforms was demanded. The seventh conference of the Jana Sangh was again held under the presidentship of Acharya Ghosh in Bangalore from December 26 to April 8, 1958. In the 1957 general elections, Jana Sangh won four seats and the vote percentage almost doubled to 5.93%. On 10 September 1958, Norunun Pact was signed. Consequently, the Berubri Union of Jalpaiguri was handed over to Pakistan. The Jana Sangh organized countrywide agitation to save Berubri youth in Nairatul Torlairatul Aimbatanbadar. Strong voice was raised against the infiltration of China on the borders. The Jan Sangh demanded the liberation of Tibet and mass awakening programs were organized throughout the yearhood from June 23 to July 6. 10 day study workshop was organized in Pune for the MLAs and MPs who, from January 23 to the 8th conference of the Jana Sangh was held under the presidentship of Sri Pitambadas in Nagpur. Programs to make government cautious against the illusion of Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai and raising of the voice against Chinese aggression continued throughout the year. From 30th December, 1962 1st January 1961 the ninth conference was held under the presidentship of Sri Rama Rao the tenth conference was held under the presidentship of great linguist Acharya Raghu Veera on December 29 to 31st 1962 in Bhopal unfortunately on 14th May 1963 Acharya Raghu Veera died in a road accident and Acharya Ghosh was again elected president. The 11th conference was held under the presidentship of Acharya Devaprasad Ghosh from December 28 Mudal Muppadavare, Ayiratul Tolayiratul Arabati Moonju in Ahmedabad Road, in Ayiratul Tolayiratul Arabati Render, Padanandi MPs were elected from the Jana Sangh and the vote percentage was Arapurli Nandu Nandu. In the history of the Jana Sangh, the year 1964 is a milestone. From August 10th to Padanendu, a study camp was held in Gwalia where principle and policy draft was conceptualized in which integral humanism was implicit. In November 1964, the National Executive accepted the draft and in the 12th All India Conference, held under the presidentship of Sri Bachraj Vyas from January 23rd to 26, 1965 in Vijavara, it was officially declared philosophy of the party. In December 1964, the Jana Sangh demanded the making of the atom bomb.